Mr Crispin here once again and welcome to my workshop. Now before I begin there's something I need to clarify. Billy, as in this Billy, is not my partner. Billy happens to be brother Billy, as in the owner of my brother's toothbrush or in fact all three of them. Now with that clarified it's on to today's topic which happens to be regrinding a lathe spindle nose and to begin I'm going to cover the ways and various bits in items to protect it from grinding debris using my materials of choice which happen to be blankets and tin foil. Here at the lathe I have taken some precautionary measures. They're quite straightforward but let's have a little close up look at them. Protection of the bedways is going to be straightforward. Wherever I happen to be working, whether it's dressing here or grinding here, I will just lay these cloths down at the point of working. So they're not attached to anything. I will just be positioning them at the point of the operation where they are most effective. Um, the dressing arrangement for this wheel is going to be a single point diamond mounted on this post. So for purposes of dressing, I have protected the front of the chuck using tin foil. This portion of the machine is going to be subject to the most debris because um, you know the chucks will come and go but actually this piece is going to be here for the entirety of the work I'm carrying out. Now I suspect that within this it is designed thoroughly such that bits and pieces can't get in there but to make sure of it I have carried out this form of protection. I've taken a strip of tin foil, folded it into four to make a long thin strip. I've then wrapped it round. I've taped it to the spindle nose. I've oiled underneath this layer and then I've put an elastic band around so the tin foil is staying with the spindle nose and gliding over the stationary piece that is attached to the headstock under here. So that should stop anything being able to get down the gap hopefully from both sides. So that is that. Let's move on and look at the build up of the wheel on the spindle. Onto this spindle I'm going to build my wheel set up. Now first of all in an ideal world you put the guard on. That goes on there and this screw locks it down. I had a few people asking was this screw a fine adjust for the up and down. Um, no it's not, it is the screw that holds the guard on. However I've got internal grinding to do here as well as external and this is not compatible with the internal grinding I've got to do. So this is staying off and this screw will just go all the way down. So that leaves the spindle in the state you can currently see it. And onto there goes a spacer. Onto the spacer goes my wheel. Now this happens to have blotters both sides. And on this wheel is something that's going to make a few of you go, oh dear. But we'll discuss that in a minute. Into the wheel goes another spacer. And in goes the nut. So what's the idea? Well as you can see this wheel actually has a chunk missing and if you go on any grinding course they will tell you that if a wheel has a chunk like that you must discard it because the forces involved in creating that chunk could have compromised the wheel structure, it might have a crack and therefore it might burst. Now I was going to set a good example by another wheel and then show you this and say I'm going to discard it, however I can't actually get another wheel of this size, it's a 3 8 bore and on the internet the only wheels I can find go up to a maximum of 40 millimeters for a 3 8 bore. This one's 45 and I could really do with that extra diameter. So um, what I'm going to do is approach this differently. I am going to use a wheel with a chunk it missing but I'm going to test it before I actually uh, go anywhere near it. So I'll be carrying out a speed test and that will commence shortly. What I'm going to do is place a wooden box around it and then I'm going to stand back, start it up and see if it explodes. It's had well over uh, a minute now, uh, 60 seconds is the standard, so as far as I'm concerned that wheel is safe to use. Right, uh, no this is not actually a picture from a health and safety exam, this is actually my wheel dressing setup. What I've got here is the following. 
The diamond is placed at the back of the wheel. Now this actual arrangement departs slightly from standard single point dress setup. Normally if you have a wheel here and the wheel's going this way, you put the diamond off centre slightly this way. That means that A, if the stone comes out, it is kicked out rather than being drawn into the wheel. And also it means that it puts the wear spot on one side so that you can rotate the diamond round and get an even wear pattern. The specifics of this arrangement don't allow me to do that, so I'm just having to go for what I can get. Because what's really important here is that the diamond is on the centre line of the spindle. Dressing a flat, it doesn't matter whether you're on centre behind, even up here somewhere, but dressing an angle, the diamond must be on centre, otherwise I will incur an error. So that is that bit of the setup. I've then got a hoover down here to try and extract some of the dressing dust, both for the purpose of the machine and my lungs. And thirdly, the lathe's in bottom gear, meaning this is offering some resistance, but you still get a little bit of backlash in the gears. I can't afford to have this diamond moving around, so to overcome the backlash I've put the chuck key in, I've put one of my dad's old bungee cords around it, and I've hooked that on so that the backlash is taken out. I'm happy with this setup now, and I'm going to proceed to dress the wheel. Successful. I've got my face prepared for end face work. The angle is 7.125 degrees on there, if everything's worked out right, and a workable length of 15 millimetres, which should be just enough. Um, bearings don't seem warm, that's okay, so on to grinding. Well, allow me to introduce you to my spindle nose. He's very well behaved, however, he does suffer somewhat from cosmetic appearance and high spots. This spindle nose has clearly had a very hard life and all these little marks you can see have probably been caused by swarf being left in the gap between the corresponding faces when everything is tightened up. This happens to be brand new and it has no marks in it but getting swarf stuck in these joints affects both surfaces. I'm starting with the spindle nose and basically this portion here on the taper is in the worst condition. So I'm going to re-grind the taper and then I will re-grind this face in relation to it. A D16, which this happens to be, D16 spindle nose arrangement, happens to be a dual surface design. So both the taper and the face are used to align and secure the work holding devices to the spindle. 
Um, compare that to say a Morse taper where it's just on the on the tapered portion. This requires the taper and the face. So both surfaces have to be right. But I'm going to start with this and I'm just going to grind it until I regain what I consider to be a satisfactory surface. So there'll still be some evidence of these dings but I'm going to remove the high spots and I'm going to regain hopefully 85% of the surface. So uh, let's have a go. Normally in grinding external diameters the wheel and workpiece relationship are like this. So the wheel is at the back, the workpiece is of course in the middle and they're actually both rotating the same way meaning that where they meet one is coming down and the other is coming up so they're working against each other so to speak. Here I can't actually get this unit over to the back, not enough cross slide travel so what I'm going to do is work here the grinder will be going around this way so I'm going to run the lathe spindle in reverse to hopefully create the same cutting conditions but on the side I can reach. To stop any sparks going into the workings I'm plugging the holes with kitchen towel and then I'm also going to get a cloth here and stuff it up its jumper. And then I'm going to spray the lot with some old coolant so that it doesn't catch fire. The rags are in position, everything's set and I've laid a piece of metal on here so that the rag doesn't get caught in the belt. And with all that said, I'll put the hoover on and see what happens. Well, I think that certainly regained the surface. <coughs> it's the question of how much further I want to go. So the question is how much more would make a difference? is that. It's quite a nice uh, surface actually. A few uh, big things in there but that's that. More than happy with that as a surface. So now let's have a look at the back face. I'm just going to take a very light touch on and then have a look at it and offer the master up. Now I have no idea whether these tool post grinders are designed to take end loads. The bearing arrangement would suggest not, but uh, I'm going to have a go. Okay, so I can feel a bit of play in the radial direction, so up and down, side to side, I've got a bit of play. That means that currently when coming into contact with this face, there is clearance between the two tapers. That's fine, because this face is what I want to work on, and this might be a good point in time for me to mention that what you're actually aiming for with these fits is for the diameter to come into full contact and with enough pressure just pushing on by hand you actually want a small gap left between the two faces so that when the drawdown bolts are used it actually pulls 
the tapers hard together. Based on my internet research, this gap wants to be between one and two thou when I've just offered this up by hand. So I'm now going to continue to work on that face and I'm going to keep going until when I offer the tapers up together I'm left with a gap of between one and two thou at the back. I will be doing this using marking out blue on the female and uh, let's take it slowly and see where I get to. On to the bluing stage now and I don't want much blue here at all. I'll get this prepared and then we'll have a little look. Right, I have a blued up back plate, very thin amount of bluing and I'm going to do this in a particular way. I marked the top here, just a, a reference point. I'm going to offer this up and I'm going to let it hang gravity wise on the 12 o'clock position where I've marked. I'll then slide it up the taper until it comes to a halt. At that point I'll take a print and remove it and then I'll examine the bedding pattern. Now it will definitely be in contact at the top because I'm going to let gravity and me pushing on it make it do so. And what will be interesting is then from there where else does it contact. If I get contact here and no contact at the bottom but contact on the face then I know that the tapered section is not in full contact because it will be touching on the top touching on the back but the bottom will still be in clearance. If I get contact all around the taper but nothing on the face then I know that it's slid back the full tapers come into contact but it hasn't got as far back as the face. Alternatively it could be in contact round here and on the face um, in which case the patterns match pretty exactly but let's uh, have a go so this is going to go on bearing down on the 12 o'clock and now pressing down and back right well I like the look of the top contact. I have a feeling this may be hard to see on camera. <coughs> where my mark is there, that is where the taper finishes and returns to a, a parallel section. I can see I've got a good bluing contact on several ridges that run along like that. So that tells me that the taper on the wheel and what I'm trying to achieve coincide nicely because I've got a good long contact, the full area. Let's now roll this round 180 degrees. Well I've got very little evidence of any contact. So starts there, the contact stops about there and round here it stops just there. So considering just the radial direction, um, I've got contact in that top third or so. So that means that the full diameter hasn't yet come into contact. So pressing all the way back, can I feel anything radially? A very small amount. Let's have another thou off this surface. Bluing round number two. Any patchiness on here I believe is just down to the consistency with which I've applied it using my applicator. Um, right, same principle again. In fact, let's get that back to uh, my mark. You know, bear down on 12 o'clock. I have a feeling as contact with the back face. Right, at the top good bluing but then that wasn't in question. There is now evidence of blue all the way around the diameter, albeit it's a bit heavier directly where I was pressing. Um, there is also blue now around most of this face. 
Right, well, while I was swapping cameras there, you missed the most extraordinary sound ever to be produced by a grinding spindle. Did something blow up? No, but the rag decided to try and go down the hoover pipe. Right, that was just over a thou taken off. Got a bit of a different feel to it this time. The taper isn't really revealing much. Heavy contact on the top where I was pressing and nothing all around here. Um, so perhaps I need to take a little more off. Several hours have now passed since I last had the camera on, but I'm there. Freshly blued up. If I now put this on, it can be observed that the taper now has blue on it, but the face doesn't. Um, let me show you that once more. So that goes on. And taking a 1000 feeler gauge, I can come round this face and it just goes in all the way around. What does that mean? Well, it means that when the draw bolts are done up, it's going to pull those tapers onto each other firmly. And that means that this is a stable work holding method, both in terms of the radial portion, because those tapers are tight against each other, the radial portion is snug, and also face to face. Actually, it can't go anywhere either. So I'm pleased with that and I'm going to go as far as to say that's been highly successful. What took so long? Well, basically, the limitations of the tool post grinder are horsepower. Also, that wheel I've been using is a very fine grit and just trying to work your way back, you know, I've probably taken five, six, seven thou off since I started this morning and um, that has been enough to uh, tie up quite a bit of time but it's done the job and I am now going to see whether or not I have ruined this whole thing altogether. I'm going to put the draw bolts back in and see do they still correspond with the tightening. Hopefully the amount I've taken off is not enough to have upset the system. I've reinstalled the uh, bits. Well, I hereby declare this operation a success. The day I've had. Well, thankfully, that all went to plan. It involved quite a bit more end face work than I was expecting, but it has at least happened. Now, what's the conclusion? Well, let's take the easy bit first. What if I was to do exactly the same again? I think the main difference I would make is I would take the absolute minimum off that tapered diameter. I went down the route of seeing how good I could make the taper, which now I've got here uh, is nice to have done. However, uh, you know, a significant number of hours later, had I just cleaned up the taper to the minimal requirement, I think there would have been significantly less material to take off this face. And it also shows you could actually get yourself in quite a pickle doing this. If you were to take, say, 0.2 off that taper, you would end up really quite far back here and probably run into problems with these locking arrangements. So minimal off the taper diameter if I was to do that again. In terms of grinding, I think all I'd really do differently is use a coarser wheel, if I could get hold of a coarser wheel. Uh, there's not a lot else you can really play with in a setup like this. The speed is pretty much determined by the wheel. This was as low as the lathe would go at standard 50 hertz. So 
not a great deal difference grinding wise apart from maybe a coarser wheel. I probably would go as far as to say if you knew you had a lot of material to take off and all you've got is a tool post grinder perhaps try and rough it out with some kind of turning tool first but that's pretty much my conclusion it's gone to plan just took a while so this is not the end of this little project the tool post grinder is staying on there for now and in my next video i will be doing some internal grinding with the same setup perhaps with a different wheel apart from that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you found this interesting and see you on the next video